This area is a major crossroads in Central Europe, with the borders of Austria, the Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary all lie in close proximity. We start in Austria and follow the river Morava downstream in a swarm of mosquitoes. We then scale the Brownsburg mountain close to the Slovak border and from there we can see Western Hungary, where the Iron Curtain was first breached 20 years ago. The Hungarians in fact began dismantling the border many months before the fall of the Berlin Wall. The sandy bed and shallow waters of Lake Neusiedl made it a popular escape route. Relations between Hungary and the West were so good that the Hungarians simply gave their neighbors a watchtower for free. The Austrians converted it and today it serves as a lookout platform. From there you can watch the ducks, herons and horses that share the habitat with Hungarian grey cattle and white donkeys. They are all oblivious to the concept of a border, of course. The view down onto Lake Neusiedl also reveals the terrain's trickier aspects. It's easy to get lost in the tall reeds. This part of the border, 10 kilometers away in Schopron, seemed a safer bet for East German refugees. It was a disused border crossing guarded by just six soldiers. The pan-European picnic took place here on the 19th of August 1989, officially a peace demonstration that was allowed to escalate into something altogether different. Arpad Bella was a border guard, the right man at the right time from the perspective of East German refugees. Being in charge of a section of the border, he had known since 1987 that the border was literally falling apart and was no longer much of a barrier, not even for rabbits and deer. Spare parts had to be imported from the West at great expense. The Russians stopped making the materials. There was the option of getting them from France. But we were a poor country, and it was not normally possible to import. Arpad Beller is used to telling the story of what happened here that day, 20 years ago. He found himself undermanned, overwhelmed, and unable to contact his superiors. I decided to remain humane. Whether you were in uniform or a civilian was irrelevant. These were difficult conditions. And as the masses approached, he had little time to think of how to react. We had 10 seconds. You could see them at a distance of 100 meters. We realized it was a group and we were expecting a delegation but instead of a delegation, at least 150 East Germans turned up. They were young and strong. But you could see they were really nervous. You could see it in their eyes and in their faces. At any moment, the situation could have exploded. But a few people were smiling. Some were shouting and hugging each other. It was crazy. It occurred to Bella while driving home afterwards that he could face treason charges. Bad luck, he thought. But just three weeks later, the Hungarian government formally opened its borders and Lieutenant Colonel Bella kept his job. Ten years later, he was even awarded a decoration. But he was not the only one left in the dark. The mayor of Sankt Margareten, just over the border in Austria, was one of those invited to the pan-European picnic, but was unable to reach the border. The Hungarians wanted to open the gate. They couldn't, because by the time it was forced open, the people had already pushed it across to Austria. He's sure Bella's reason and restraint prevented a potential bloodbath. While his memories of that day are clearly still very emotional. He told his comrades they were powerless. He refused to shoot people, so he decided to look the other way. We visited one man who was privy to more information about the picnic, 
and to reach him, we had to go to Sukligate in Budapest. The Hungarian Maltese Charity Service has an office here, and this is probably the only church in the world with a trabant as a trophy in the garden. It's no coincidence. Pastor Imre Cosma's garden became a transit camp for 45,000 East German refugees. He knew the border's permeability had to be tested. We made copies of the invitations to the pan-European picnic and gave our guests directions to Sopron. He openly took the side of the refugees trying to reach the West, contrary to the efforts of the East German government. The East German consul wanted to come in and talk to the refugees. We didn't let him into the garden, but we gave him a trailer next door. None of the East Germans went to see him. <laughs> East German diplomats Wolfgang Forster and Dieter Graumann never had a chance to make their case. The pastor urges Germans never to forget that historical period. Perhaps some of the refugees from back then will stop by to visit him.